So uh, in the next 15 minutes, I want to invite you to come along a journey. Um, and transport and travel is really exciting, right? We love, every one of us loves to travel. Um, travel takes us to new places. Um, transportation helps us to get there. The problem is, often this experience is quite painful. Um, you have traveled here today, and your example of getting into the parking space, well, queuing up, downloading an app, the experience today is cumbersome. And if you then multiply that, think about your last um, trip overseas. The airline experience is not necessarily the best experience that we can imagine. Same with the daily commute. So fundamentally, if you look at it from an entrepreneur's point of view, the travel experience is pretty broken. We all accept what we have today, but we shouldn't. We should invent the future of the travel experience. And in the next minutes, I will, I hope to bring you along this journey to give you some stimulus, how you think about the travel of the future. While you look at these images from Mars, have a think about how we can go to further places, make this adventure more exciting, and how you want to architect that together with us. <clears throat> so, this morning we heard from uh, Tony Braxton Smith and uh, New South Wales Transport. He outlined scenarios for the future. And while they were interesting, we need to take it further. We need to think about the enablers that actually help us to build and deliver on those scenarios. And as we just heard, deliver on those scenarios in a very compressed time frame. We can build this in the next five years. This is less than a decade away. And I want to illustrate to you, by taking you to Mars, about what's possible and what humankind can create. So let me navigate this. So Mars, 25 years ago, 33% of the missions to Mars failed. From a project point of view, that's pretty appalling. You would not back any of that investment if you are a VC, right? In the last 10 years, not one mission failed. So humankind is able to crack the most difficult problems. And now mankind is getting to Mars at an accelerated pace. You have entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and many other businesses. We have seen um, Fleet Space this morning to crack this challenge. It's, it will start off to get us to Moon, to have a base there, and then getting the payloads over to Mars and establishing a colony on Mars. And the fascinating thing here is, and for smart cities, an interesting learning, governments and government agencies are not driving this. NASA is supporting with funding, but the innovation and the technology and the delivery is done by private companies. So, question is, what do we do when we get to Mars? Why should we even go there? And getting to the destination is one thing, but then living on Mars is another thing. The good news is, private companies have cracked that problem already today. And another implication for IoT and your startups and your businesses is, don't reinvent the world, but focus on the basics. So travel, transportation, smart cities, focus on the use cases that every one of us needs, right? The painful experiences that we have today in transportation, solve those. So for Mars, it's solve these use cases for me. Give me some food, otherwise I'll die. Water, shelter, clothing, and make me breathe. So Waver will extract um, 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 uh, air from the Martian atmosphere and recycle it 
so that um, the, the population has oxygen. Um, we'll have food generated and grown on Mars um, coupled with um, water. And shelter is provided through new materials that are much lower cost and actually 3D printed on Mars rather than transported over. So that all then helps with clothing because the Martian atmosphere is not as dense as the, as the Earth atmosphere. You're able to walk around with much lighter material and Dava Newman, who I, who I worked with at the World Economic Forum, is already testing those um, materials now on Earth. And ultimately, a smart city then can look like this on Mars. And Elon Musk last week in Adelaide shared his vision of how he wants to grow um, the Martian population and grow smart cities on Mars, addressing those basic human needs first. So why is this all important for the future of transportation, but also smart cities here, right here on Earth? I believe there are four connected modes of transport that are going through radical change, as we just heard from uh, Kay. There's lots happening with car transportation, autonomous vehicles, electrification. I will not touch on that in the next five minutes. I want to give you a glimpse on interplanetary. I think I've done enough there. Intercontinental, intercity travel, and then intracity commute. So let's tackle those quickly. Intercontinental travel. So some of you might have seen this, Elon Musk, he's a great guy, very visionary, he presented this in Adelaide last week. Um, it's his big rocket taking him to Mars, but actually because of the cost envelope coming down so much and innovations in IoT for precision landing and connected mesh data networks, he can take that innovation and fly people around Earth for, for lower cost within 30 minutes anywhere in the world, or one hour maximum. This is an old innovation. Richard Branson has tried this 15 years ago with Virgin Galactic, but my belief is one of those entrepreneurs in the next decade will make this happen, and at a, at a price point that will surprise us. Now, clearly, rockets around the uh, uh, world is one thing, but even for long-haul travel, you will have new materials to enable a more customized experience. So you will have swap uh, um, cabins that you can swap in and out based on the demand that you get through the sensors and the connected devices. You can configure your plane, pretty much a modular plane on the go, um, thereby providing a better experience and clearly also um, um, much more revenue generating if you equip it with the right uh, modules. Um, this also has implications for the car industry. Why always have the same cars if you can just modularize it and change the configuration on the go? Airports, we touched on it already, but airports not only from a car perspective, but from a footprint perspective of connected devices, why do you need to wait at the baggage carousel number five? That's an appalling experience. It's actually the worst experience because you arrive and you're so excited about everything, and then you wait for another half an hour and it's, it's a really awkward moment. So there have been innovations in baggage tracking, Bluetooth and Zigbee and so on, but now with miniaturization of GPS, more power devices, in a decade, you don't need baggage carousels anymore. You can have a whole new startup just to deliver and the baggage follows you to the hotel. 
radically changing the footprint of the infrastructure at the airports, but also massively improving the experience for the customer. Intercity Hyper, um, Hyperloop, I won't touch on now. You've all heard about it, but this is about accelerating the speed and um, taking congestion out of, out of places, not necessarily in Australia, but overseas and China and so on. That's where the intercity commute will change. I will talk more about um, intracity commute, something that is close to my heart. I um, not only built flight simulators when I was a teenager, and I love everything that has to do with aviation, but I was um, fortunate enough to help um, Lilium in the latest financing round, it's a Munich-based startup. They have 50 employees, and Tencent, the Chinese Google, just invested 90 million into this company. It is not a drone. It is a plane, an, an electric plane, that can um, take a family for 300 kilometers um, across a city. And the question that I want you to think about is whether this is a car or a plane. So you have um, an airplane that takes off vertically, like a helicopter. But once it's in the air, it accelerates into forward flight and flies with wingborne lift. And this way it achieves much higher speeds than cars, but also higher speeds than a helicopter. So connectivity is what it's all about. So again, stimulus to think about on-demand transportation across multiple dimensions on, on the surface, but also in the air not owning any vehicles, but actually just tapping your app and then getting a Lilium device or thing and flying to your workplace. Um, interestingly enough, I mentioned Tencent. So this is not a Google investment or a Facebook investment, but the Chinese and the data-driven companies like Tencent are investing in transportation heavily. Next example is how you build these things. This is an example of Airbus. This drone um, is, is, a, is a transportation drone, cargo drone, but Airbus didn't build it. It's a crowd-sourced drone. 20,000 engineers, they just built it on the internet, and it's flying. They um, have a prototype flying in Austin, and Airbus is facilitating that community. So I think this is an amazing example of how corporates think about transportation, how they build new um, things to enable transportation in the future. That's not enough. So I talked about materials, manufacturing, building those things, um, thinking about on-demand model. But the presentation this morning of fleet space was a great example of how the connectivity needs to fall into place. So making sure that you have a layered network on the ground again for a smart city, but then thinking about um, a drone network that not only provides goods from A to B or, 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 or has has um, transportation elements, but is actually part of that net mesh network. So providing information out to the other participants in that network. And then obviously the satellite connectivity. So as we build this out, um, smart cities together with private companies like Telstra and Fleet Space and others need to think about how they assemble these network layers. So and this is um, finally where we come in at Unleash Live we built an edge computing device at miniature level that pre-processes data on the edge and then ships selected data back into the cloud so that these things communicate with each other, but also that businesses can make much faster decisions. And it's a two-way data exchange. And um, with that, I want to close and just 
show you again how important I think um, this topic of transportation is for us all um, as the current model as I said is pretty much broken and it will get worse in the next five to ten years. Energy waste and emissions are so high with the current models. Um, the gasoline powering small aircraft is now the single largest source of lead emissions. So let's rethink how we can get rid of this cancerous element in our skies. Congestion is immense. We have 42 hours spent in traffic jams on average. Um, traveler volume is significantly increasing, so this will all get worse. So the case is here for, you, for all of the startups to innovate and to shape this future. So I, I invite you to come along this journey. Thanks a lot. Thank you.